In this video, we'll take a look at pop art, the history, artworks, and inspiration for making our own pop art inspired drawings. First off, what is pop art? Well, it's an art movement or style from around the 1960s. It was based on popular culture or pop culture. Common objects and everyday scenes were depicted in this style of artwork. The artist wanted to draw some meaning from the ordinary around us, and therefore they kind of stole from the world around us. You can see an example here to the left. At the top, it's an original comic book page, and beneath it is a piece of pop art. That detail shows that these are really similar, and almost you could say that that piece on the bottom there, which came three years later, might have been stolen. Let's take a closer look at this popular artist, Roy Lichtenstein. He was a huge contributor to the pop art movement and a great example. Lichtenstein's early works weren't pop art, at least they didn't look that way. He worked in a pretty traditional style. Looking at some of his earlier works, like Reclining Woman, or maybe that second artwork here, Sitting Man, we just see line contour drawings and ink work. It doesn't look like the pop art that we know today. Now, something happened a little later in his career, so right around 1960, you can see that untitled work there. He's really starting to look at more of an explosion of color and starting to experiment. We can even see some of those primary colors come forward, and those will be important for later when he truly becomes a pop artist. Lichtenstein is known for a very particular style which drew inspiration from Bende dots. Benjamin Day, actually created this printing technique which can be used in newspapers. We also see it in comic books and later Roy Lichtenstein brought it to an art gallery. So these pieces on the bottom are original Bende dot printed pieces that you could see in a newspaper on the left or in a comic book or the comic section of the newspaper on the right. So you can see that Bende dot style there. Lichtenstein made it his own. He enlarged those dots and he enlarged comic book artwork. So you can see that Bende dot style coming forward in his pieces. He still used common day objects and drew from pop culture, just like any good pop artist. The dots though, this was his signature. This was what really made him stand out in this genre. The piece on the left is a Lichtenstein piece, this idea of an image duplicator. It comes up from the fact that, well, he kind of duplicated images. If you look at the pieces on the right, those were all works out of comic books that came first. Look at that black and white one on the top and how similar it is to what Roy Lichtenstein ended up creating later. So he is pulling a lot from what currently existed in pop culture at that time. And in this case, he pulled a lot from comic books. How did Lichtenstein work in this style? Well, he created everyday scenes and objects, he used his enlarged Bende style dots and bold color. He outlined shapes in black to help reference that comic book kind of culture, and he exaggerated shadows and highlights in his work. Color is a big element in pop art. It's made up of hue, value, and intensity, and pop art often included primary colors like red, yellow, and blue. Value is another important element, and this describes the lightness and darkness of tones and colors. For instance, white would be your lightest value, and black would be the darkest. In Lichtenstein's pop art, he exaggerated and also simplified value. He used those special dots to show value, and he also used really exaggerated lines. Shape is another important term to be familiar with when creating. Shape is something that Lichtenstein used in creating those bende dots all over the background of his piece to add interest. He used those circles. So this is in reference to a two-dimensional form, and shape is another big key word to think of as you're creating. 
Line is equally as important, we hinted at this earlier, in that lines can be used to create value, which is exactly what Lichtenstein does in pop art. He uses dark outlines around his objects also. You'll be creating a pop art drawing, so the requirements for that drawing are to create a pop art inspired drawing of an everyday object. You should include a logo, brand name, or another kind of text on your object. You should also use Lichtenstein's enlarged Bende style dots. You can draw digitally or with traditional materials, and you'll want to outline shapes in black and exaggerate your shadows and highlights. As an option, you could choose to create a traditional drawing. I would recommend using colored pencils, markers, sharpies, highlighters, crayons, anything like that. But you want to stay away from looser materials like pastel, which can smudge, watercolor, which can bleed, acrylic paint, temper paint, charcoal. Those are all materials you want to stay away from. So if you choose to complete a traditional drawing, you'll want to use colored pencils, markers, sharpies, highlighters, or crayons. Those are great materials for this. You could also choose to create a digital drawing. You could, believe it or not, use something as simple as Word. You can also use Paint 3D or other digital drawing programs that you might be comfortable with. If you go this route of creating a digital drawing, you have a lot of options available there as well. Here are your steps for creating a pop art drawing. First off, no matter what style you choose to work in and what materials you choose to work with, you need to find an object to use as a reference. Will your object be a commercial food or beverage item with a label? Will you pick a common household object that has text? What kind of packaging and label do you think would be most interesting? Start to think about that when you look for your reference. You can use a real object or a photograph for that reference. Next, you'll want to work on a Bende dot template if you have one available. You can download and print your own if you'd like, or if you're working digitally, you can work straight on top of that digital template. This is an option, however. You could choose to work by hand, and if you don't have a template, that's still okay. Next, you'll move on to sketch the basic outline of your piece using a pencil and then you'll want to clean up and darken the lines. Pick out the highlights and avoid adding color to those areas. Then begin to shade the background using a lighter color. You'll shade all the large parts of the object with a lighter color as well. And again, you'll be avoiding color in those highlighted areas. Don't color over your highlights or you won't be able to get them back. Next, shade the details, and then you get to fill in all of your dots in that Bende style. You'll want to use a different color. For instance, if you're using one color marker for the background, you can use a slightly different marker, and that will actually create another color. Then add hatching for shadows and a bold outline to finish off the object. You'll want to make sure you're storing your drawing safely. You'll be submitting your finished drawing by the end of next class. So make sure you save your drawing in the meantime while you're working on it. With traditional drawings, you should store your drawing safely and consider taking an in-progress picture of it. Just make sure you set it aside somewhere where you can find it again. With digital drawings, save a digital version of the document you're working in, whether that's in Paint 3D or Word, and you'll want to take a snip of your piece. You'll end up submitting the snip. That'll keep a nice simplified file that you'll be able to easily turn in. Now it's time to create your own pop art drawings. I'm estimating that this could take you upwards of an hour and a half. Now it may take you a little less, it may take you a little more, it'll all depend on the object you pick. Just keep in mind I am estimating that hour and a half time frame so that you can have a quality 
pop art inspired drawing. You'll be submitting this piece next class, so you'll have today and uh, a little bit of the next period to work on this as well. I can't wait to see what you create.